drum patterns and melodies and chord progressions, arrange them into a track, and when you're done arranging them, export it and turn it into an actual Ableton project file. Once you've made your song in Excel, what are you gonna do? We'll put it on Spotify and on iTunes, of course. <laughs> Segway, the sponsor of this video comes in. With DistroKid, you can put your music on streaming services like Spotify, Apple Music, and even TikTok. Your Excel beats on TikTok. Who really doesn't want that? And you're not just paying to upload one song or two. With DistroKid, you can upload unlimited amount of songs. So that's like at least three. I myself have used DistroKid for over two years now, and I have no complaints, so yeah. If you use my link in the description, then you'll get a discount and it will help support the channel too. months ago, I released Drum Machine. I didn't really know what to expect. It was just a weird, silly idea that I wanted to make. The reception for it was really cool. There was articles written about it. Thank you to all those people that, that thought, hey, this is newsworthy. It was on Reddit, like it got a lot of upvotes. Thank you for the gold, kind stranger. <laughs> Here's the arrangement view. You got the play. And if you click again, it stops. Next button is the add track. This whole line next to the track, that's where you would put your patterns in. Let's say you have a bass line on pattern number one, then you just put pattern number one there and it fills up with a little color, which is really helpful. And it also resembles that meme. That was really like a big inspiration of designing this. If you wanna get rid of a track, you can remove it. Once you're done with your whole entire track, you can click on export. You might need to let it do it thing for a couple of moments, but it will export into an ALS file and you'll be able to play the whole entire song in Ableton. Literally what you see, these drums, synths, the, the patterns that you write, that gets put into the Ableton, like MIDI clips as well, which honestly deserves a video of its, of its own, kind of part of another project that I'm working on. But anyways, you put an S down, then you can like change the, the start point you have loop points, an E for an end point. Underneath, I just put these names of the different parts of the song, but they actually don't have any impact at all. They're just notes here. And that's the thing about Excel. You can literally just write any sort of notes, add more bass. Then if you want to get rid of everything, then you can just click this X button and it'll just clear and it'll start from the beginning. Then we have the tracks down here. These little green boxes can actually be filled up with an S or an M. It would just play the drums on their own. Alternatively, I can mute something. If I press M here, well then that's gonna mute the bass. These tracks are all grouped, so you can click this little plus button and they'll open up and you get a couple more settings from, or you just open them all like that. All the patterns that you put in the drum track right at the top, these are the patterns that go to the drum machine. And if you put a pattern in every under track underneath, these go to the piano roll. So that's like your bass line and chords and melody. Here we have program and channel. This is what the PNC stand for. When you're using device one, then changing the program will change the instrument. Put this to 10, that'll... Oh, it's a different, it's a different sound. There's this volume thing and that's just will change the percentage so let's say you have a pattern playing at a, at a velocity of 100 then if you put 80 here then then it will play 80 percent of that or i could go above to 200 except velocity does have a maximum value of 127 it's not going to go above that let's say your velocity was at 50 and you put 200 well then it'd go to to 100 anyways you could make tracks quieter than other ones if they're too loud yeah it is a very makeshift mixer in a sense. And then you have semitones, so you can transpose the whole track one here, then all the notes will get transposed by one note higher. Or I could put it to 12 and it'll be an octave higher. Or I could put it to minor 12 and then it's an octave lower. Let's say you want to just make one pattern higher than the rest, or well then you can just put that 12 
underneath, the rest will just play normally at the normal pitch. That counts for the velocity as well. So each cell here represents one bar. But let's say you have a pattern that's longer than one bar because the piano roll is actually four bars long, so, so you can write long melodies and long chord progressions. If I just did 10 over again, it would just play that beginning part. But if I want to play the whole bar, I'm using these little dots. It's just the like a full stop to continue it. You can also put in parts. You can do 16.2, because that's the second bar of 16, 16.3, third bar, and then 16.4. If I want to zoom in, I can just hold down control and then scroll as the mouse wheel so I can like see more of it or get closer. Here are the global settings. So BPM. Here's the device. I talked about it in the last video, so I'll go more in detail in that video, but you're sending it either to the output of your interface or to a virtual MIDI port, and that will go into a synth, and therefore you can play chords and, and things in the synth. So now we're in the piano roll. Hey, here's a chord pattern. The biggest thing you'll probably just need to know is just putting down X. So if I put down an E, so that was very short. Oh, okay, and let me just turn the metronome off as well. If I put more down, then it's just gonna play lots of different notes. If I put down an X next to the note, then that will become a sustained note. So that, that one at the bottom that holds down, and I can do that for all of them. But if I have to do that each time, that can be a little bit annoying. There is that dragging the corner and dragging it out, except when you do that, it kind of messes with the, the styling of the, the grid. So that's unfortunate. However, there's a different shortcut, a very cool shortcut, and that is to make a selection. And then once you have like a bar selection, just press X once, then press Control and Enter. All of them will fill in. You can even do this multiple times. Fill in that one, and then I can make another one here. This will give me a major seven chord. So now, bam. All of those are filled in. I can even like draw a whole melody this way. Wow, they're all just filled in now. Couldn't be happier with that. Then we have some extra buttons up here that will just change the octave so I can make it go octave lower. Or transpose it. You can also make a selection. The part that you selected, that's what will get transposed up or down. So I can like just transpose that part or make it go an octave higher. Now you can see it's like it's outside of the box, so that's not gonna do anything anymore. If I put this part here and transpose it up, because this shifts up, like that's going to get erased. So that's just something to be aware of. I can click this duplicate button over here, and then I'll just duplicate to the second bar. And then if I click duplicate two, then that will copy the first two bars to the last two bars. What if we want to re-trigger a note? You can't do that if you just have the X's in a row, but if you put a little exclamation mark behind it, then that's the, the universal key for a re-trigger. <laughs> then at the top, you have this counter thing that actually has some features, just like the, the arrangement view. If you like put S down somewhere, then it will just begin from that point. An E here, or and then it'll just loop that part. This doesn't have any effect on the actual pattern in the arrangement view. So don't think like, oh, the pattern that plays is only gonna be that selection that you just had. You also have a program and channel thing here. So if I change this to a nine, then... Then you just hear a different sound. Then you have patterns. Once you change this box, then it will change to that pattern. There's nothing in pattern 70, so there's nothing there. But there's a cool feature that if you like change it, it will scroll to where the chords are. So you can also just like go up by increments of one. You also have the ability to, to change velocities up here below the counter. For instance, if I want the first chord that plays to be like at a velocity of 40, which is going to be pretty quiet. These do save to a pattern. So if you have velocity like on your notes, then that will be like kept. If you play that in the arrangement, it will still have those differences in velocity. You may have noticed this little legend box. There are lots of different symbols here and you can actually use these to create additional chords, not just one note at a time. This is now gonna play a minor chord. Put like a minor nine chord. Ooh, we're getting fancy. All of these are different chords to try out. Dominant chord, augmented. They don't actually do anything in the, the ASL generator at the moment though. Then we have legato mode here, and that's quite important because that changes basically how the whole piano roll works. 
whenever you hit like the legato button in Ableton on FS Studio and all the notes just jag out to the end until um, the next chord, that's kind of what this does as well. So there isn't any mixing and matching at the moment. If you have legato mode on, it's gonna be the same for all the patterns. So it's worth like experimenting first and see which one you like better. You also have this, the S button, which will just stop it from ringing out in case you don't want that. Here's a clue, whenever you see like an off or on, you can just click it and it will just change it. If you are using legato mode in the arrangement view, because like I mentioned, it only ends chords on a new note, that if you end a pattern and there's no new pattern after that, then it will just ring out indefinitely. So what you can do is press a zero and that will mute it, that will mute any ring notes. Here's the drum machine again. I talked about this a lot, but there is now a second bar added to the drum machine. So you have 32 steps in total. Oh, look at that, look at, look at that, look, look at that oversight. Bad, there we go, fix that one. That's the XL DAW. And now we've we finally made that meme real life. No longer a funny meme, but a sad reality. <laughs> the link is in the description if you wanna download it. Hopefully this isn't just the end of this project and I can like put this experience that I gained here to future use. So if you wanna see more of that crazy stuff, but also like just some non Excel related videos, hopefully those will be coming out soon. Feel free to support me on Patreon. I, I teach lessons. And also check out the, the DistroKid link that's in the description. Thank you for watching this video. I'll see you with whatever comes next. 200K, that's what's next. That is what's next. Did someone say 24 hour live stream? I hope I don't regret saying that. Goodbye.